I've been in the jujitsu game a long time and up until this point, you can't really make what you would call a living. It's not realistic. You could maybe bring in like 20 to $30,000 a year. Just like, hey, that's not terrible, but you're working your ass off training for years and years and years, and then eventually you can start making that. Do you plan on taking a step into competing? Does the idea of making money from what you love tickle your fantasy? Then you will be shocked to know the real truth about making money in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a multi-millionaire sport whose method is different from every other combat sport. The first way a BJJ athlete makes money is through competition. Competition paves the way for other sources of income, as will be said in this video. Thanks to various BJJ events, athletes can showcase their skills and compete all year round. One of the advantages BJJ fighters have over MMA fighters is that they are not bound to an organization. As long as they are fit, they can compete in different organizations. But there's another thing about most BJJ events. Apart from IBJJF and ADCC, where there is a qualification event before the main event, other BJJ events are sometimes based on invitation. So, the more IBJJF opens and ADCC trials a BJJ athlete can win, the more recognition they would have in the sport of jiu-jitsu. This would translate to being invited to other BJJ events to compete. So, how much do the big dogs of BJJ events, IBJJF and ADCC pay? Galval advances to the lightweight final here at the 2024 Worlds. The biggest BJJ no-gi event is the ADCC. According to the 2022 ADCC competition, this is how much the athletes were paid. For the men's weight class brackets, the first position gets $10,000, while the second, $5,000. Then the third runner-up gets $3,000, and the fourth gets $1,000. While in the men's absolute bracket, the winner gets $40,000, which is 400% more than in the regular weight class. Also, the first runner-up gets the same price as the winner of the men, $10,000. The second runner-up gets $2,000 and the third runner-up $1,000. For the women's weight class brackets, the victory prize is 40% lower than the male. The winner gets $6,000 and the second in line gets $3,000 while the third goes home with $2,000 and the fourth with $1,000. But due to pressure from the BJJ community, the ADCC organizer has promised to make equal pay for both male and female divisions. For the Super Fights matches, just like Gordon Ryan and Andre Galvao's match, the King went home with $40,000 while the Atto's Jiu-Jitsu head coach bagged $10,000. Other participants that do not make it up to the fourth position could go home with cash prizes if their performance was good enough to fall under this category. Best Fighter, Best Takedown, Fastest Submission, and Best Fight of the Competition all will go home with $1,400, except in the fight of the competition, where the $1,400 will be split between each fighter. When you compare the men's winning prizes at ADCC to those at IBJJF, the former is larger, but the women's division will disagree. This is because IBJJF pays the women's division more than the ADCC does due to an equal pay policy. So instead of ADCC's $6,000, the women are paid more depending on the number of participants in the competition. In the black belt adult weight classes, the champion of a 2 to 8 competitor division is paid $5,000. In a division with 9 to 16 competitors, the champion gets paid $6,000. 17 to 32 participant champion goes home with $7,000 and a 33 plus division champion will have to make do with $8,000. But keep in mind that to get to this position, for example, the ADCC, you must first have won the trials or be so elite that you'll be invited to compete. Winning the trials is a whole lot as you have to defeat up to six different opponents depending on the division. So, of the hundreds of competitors, only four of the best take the cash prize. So, what do the others do? Some have to compete in local tournaments where they pay a registration fee. Others do not have to pay because they are covered.
This is where sponsorship comes in. Every BJJ athlete who has sponsors must have amassed a good social media following. The options with regard to training in multiple disciplines, being able to get MMA shorts or uh, grappling shorts. Coupled with an impressive win rate on the mat. With these, sponsorship deals can help take care of competition expenses as the athlete promotes their product. Also, some sponsorship deals include a percentage cut on each product bought via the athlete. <laughs> it's literally like, I have such great confidence in her skills that, uh, you know. Without sponsorship deals, it is very hard for the majority of BJJ athletes to cope. Training, traveling, and health expenses cost a lot, and seeing that there is no participation fee for most BJJ events, it could be hard to continue unless there is extra income outside of the BJJ competition. The most money made in BJJ is not in competition or sponsorship, but in sharing knowledge of BJJ. To play that game, to try to stand up and to hold a guy down, you basically have to forget about most traditional aspects of jiu-jitsu. This is the most lucrative part of BJJ. It is split into teaching seminars, selling instructionals, and running a BJJ gym. All these fall under your being a successful athlete first. Reputation is the currency for value in BJJ. A couple of wins and titles in major BJJ events make the BJJ community sing the praises of BJJ athletes. From there, these successful BJJ competitors can sell out seminars because of their record and name. Hey, I'm Joseph Chen. I'm here at Bang Tao uh, Muay Thai and MMA in uh, Phuket, Thailand. Um, we're doing a seminar here today on Moon Dima. Potentially making more from these seminar classes than on the mat. These teachings can also be turned into a passive form of income called instructionals. Once they are made, promotional posts from the athlete yield monthly sales. But the bad news is that mostly English-speaking BJJ athletes are able to sell more instructionals. Start reaching towards me, maybe I'll come in here, and that, instead of taking long frames. Also, the instructional sector is oversaturated. Mostly big names like John Danaher, Gordon Ryan, and Craig Jones sell the majority of instructionals. Although you could say the same when opening a BJJ gym, it is still possible for an average black belt to make more money from teaching than in competition, even though notable gyms make more because of the name behind it. If a BJJ athlete is able to transform his knowledge and love for jiu-jitsu into tutoring, this could be financially rewarding. BJJ athlete millionaires mostly make their money from seminars, instructionals, and gym membership. This is quite the opposite when you look at other combat sports. For example, boxing, kickboxing, and MMA. The most money is made in competition, not in the coaching part of the sport. This is an indication that getting paid a few thousand to make the podium at the world's toughest BJJ tournament just isn't going to cut it. But why is this so? Why does BJJ pay its athletes this low? Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing. To get to the answer, stay tuned for the next video.